the actual date, but the White Sox are out of town on the 16th, so the 13th is good enough for us. One book isn't enough to tell the story of Bob Feller, is it? I mean, an encyclopedia <laughs> that might be more appropriate. How many volumes? <laughs> I don't know, four or five anyway. But uh, I know it is a chronology of your career and uh, so many great moments, Bob. And, and you mentioned the war years, World War II. You were robbed at that time of four or five of the greatest years you could have had in your career because you served your country. You might have won 350 games or so. Uh, thank you, Nev. Uh, I volunteered for military service. My father was dying of cancer and died when I was in the Navy. Uh, I thought it was a thing to do. And, uh, of course, as far as I'm concerned, I'm no hero. The heroes didn't return to this country. They're in Europe. They're in the bottom of the Pacific and on the islands in the Pacific. And uh, I came back. Uh, I had a career. Only one player was killed. And uh, only one major leaguer was killed in action in World War II. That was a man from Cleveland, Ohio. His name was Elmer Gideon. He was killed on the front in France in April 1944. He was in the infantry. But um, I enjoyed my tour of duty. Uh, we won the war, and I came back, had a great career, uh, thanks to uh, a lot of good coaching, good help, good health, and a uh, little luck. Uh, and it's nice to be right here in Cleveland. And this is the, I think I've made my last stop. I know I have, right here in Cleveland. You make more personal appearances, Bob, I think, than just about anybody in Cleveland, though card shows and clinics and all of that. Uh, What's the most common question asked of you? Who's the toughest hitter you ever faced? Uh, the highlight of the career? Uh, two, two things. Who's the toughest hitter you ever faced, and how much money would you make if you're playing today? Okay, what's the <laughs> answer then? <laughs> well, like one of the other ball players of more or less of my category, somebody asked him how much he'd make if he were playing today. He's, oh, about a million maybe a week. A week, yeah. I don't know who it was, but it was some, but I would imagine I'd be right up amongst the top, at least. Uh, I don't even want a one-year contract, Nev. I like to have motivating, you know, paid up on attendance and performance, and I believe more in paying somebody for their production and their uh, potential. And how about the toughest hitter you faced? Tommy Henry. Tommy, Tommy Henry of the, the Yankees. Yankees. He even tapped right, and the best hitter I ever pitched to was Ted Williams, followed very closely, and he might have been the best hitter of all time, Rogers Hornsby. He couldn't run, and he was a right-hander. So I pitched against him. Every hit was legitimate. No leg hits for him. Well, no, not only for Ted either. <laughs> Bob, uh, before we sign off here, quick prediction on the Tribe for 1990. Do you see them being in the chase at all? Like it was a couple of years ago, they got better pitching now. It's a little iffy. If, we, if our catcher comes more, Al uh, Sandy Alomar Jr., we get a good center fielder that can handle it out there. If the pitching staff comes along with Swindell, uh, his elbow's okay, and they stay healthy. We got a good pitching staff. We got a good relief pitcher in Jones. We got middle relief. Uh, we need a leader on the field. I hope Hernandez can take that job. Uh, we haven't had a real good leader on the field. And in order for a team to win, they need a good leader. Uh, you well know, like Boudreaux or Rosen or sure. any major league club that has continual success, they've had a good leader in uniform as well as good managing, good coaching. So we need a leader on the field. Someone has to take charge. Bob, good luck with the book. Uh, hope to see you down the trail here. I know you'll be there opening day, so I'll we're looking there. forward to it. Thank you, Nev. All right, Bob Feller, uh, Hall of Famer with us today, and uh, now pitching Bob Feller. He still pitches and uh, will for the next 10 years, I think, <laughs> on the circuit.